Hello, good evening and welcome to um, this 15th anniversary of Metro TV edition of our program, Good Evening Ghana. Tonight we are taking time to talk about technology and uh, what technology can do um, to Africa. We have a very important personality in the studio. He's one of the global icons of technology and he's also young. Neville Roy Singham is a chairman of ThoughtWorks. Uh, ThoughtWorks is one of the uh, big firms in technology worldwide. He himself is a major revolutionary thinker in international uh, IT circles. Um, he will be sharing with us um, why uh, technology should be one of the areas that Africa and Ghana should look at more than looking at gold and oil. And uh, he will be telling us how that can create employment. Recently, we have been talking about employment all over the place. Uh, but is, ne is, is Roy Neville Singham coming from America the right person to tell us about this? I'll be interrogating him on that. Has he got any business telling us about that? Hello, Eric. How are you? Thank you. Welcome to the show. Thanks. What is technology colonialism? Digital colonialism is about the fact that when I came to visit Africa six months ago, I was shocked to find out how few software programmers anywhere on this continent. You find all these big American firms talking about helping Africa. Ask them how many programmers do you find in this continent? Africa is at the stage now. If we don't hire programmers and work here in Africa to solve Africa's problems, you are going to be spending the next 50 years waiting on others to solve the problems of Africa in the area of technology and software. We have some here in Ghana. We have Soft Tribe. Soft Tribe, you have Herman, you have, you know, yes, people like... Yes, Herman, yeah. Yeah, you have some of these brilliant thinkers, but we need 20 Hermans. We need 20 Bright Simons just in Ghana. We have that same issue in Uganda, the same issue in Cameroon. I was in Nigeria. They don't even have somebody of his stature in Nigeria. 160 million people. Why is there no Hermans? So your point is that we should get indigenous software programmers. Indigenous software, look at the M-Pesa, look at money, uh, mobile money. Made a big difference in, in, in Kenya. That wasn't created by some software developer in California. Created here locally. The kind of changes that technology can make to people's lives, fixing elevators in hospitals, making sure the electricity works. Why are not people here in Africa thinking technologically about those problems, using software to fix that? Why are we waiting on somebody else to help us? We buy the software, we can buy it. Yeah, but most of the software doesn't work. I, I mean, I happen to be a software expert, that's what I do. And we have a $300 million company and we write software for the biggest companies in the world. We're software experts. Most times, these big software packages that get implemented, they cost hundreds of millions of dollars. They don't work, they become door stoppers. You look at the waste in healthcare software. But, but if, we, if we produce them here, they'll work? Of course, because the people here know to make things appropriate for the people who use them. Right? You wouldn't think about mobile money. But the working. mobile telephone is not made by us, but it works here. Yeah, but you know, the software that operates this BlackBerry phone that I have, it's not made by us, but it works. I can use it. People use it. Yeah, but you have a BlackBerry, right? So I have a smartphone to it. I have an Android. It's $500, $600 phone. Do you think I can use, any, uh, use it for money in the United States? No. A small feature phone, a $50 phone, does more to help somebody in, in Kenya than my $600 Android. Yes, I agree with that. And what's the point you're making? Then? My point is, thinking about the people who created that software, there are hundreds of things like that that could be created here by people who are doing software. Thousands of applications. To facilitate our lives. To, to serve the people of this continent. You know, how many Bill Gates do you want? How many Steve Jobs do you really want? There are hundreds of things that software can actually make a difference on. How to run a clinic. Why don't we have it already? Because actually, there's two things. I think our governments here in Africa are not far-sighted enough. They stand, 10 years ago, they started putting fiber to get cell phones. Good job, no problem, it's making progress. But the next level of building software is more complicated. When I meet with various ministers and say, where is your plan to put you know, infrastructure around software, they look at me like, what, what, what am I talking about? We do not have enough educated bureaucrats, technocrats in the governments of Africa to prepare for the next 50 years. That's the problem. Well, Tika Bank begins to do advertise and say that uh, for, for Bank A, yep. from tomorrow on Saturday, you can actually see your bank accounts and your bank balance on your phone. Right. That means they've bought a new software that can do that? Yes. So somebody's written that software. Somebody behind and the scenes. And that season, person's going to get paid? A lot of money. I mean, software money. people and, you know, salaries of, of good software people in India, United States, big salaries. They're very high salaries because actually good software people are hard to find. But, you know, the thing is really it's not your training in software. A little bit of it is training. Most of it is your thinking process and how smart you are and how disciplined you are. And we often hire people who have not even studied software. And six months later, they're writing brilliant software. And that's why Africa can compete because the brains are here, the intellect is here, the passion is here, all these things are so what you, makes So you think people. the point of uh, 
beginning to compete would be to what? To train our people in, in what? So, so this is, I came here first thinking training was the most important thing. But then I started talking to the governments and I realized, like Nigeria, there's 20,000 people in school ready to be a computer person. They know it's good money. But when they get out of school, guess what? There aren't going to be jobs. And I blame the governments of Africa for a short-sighted policy. Why are they not thinking, where are the jobs going to be for these people? If you look at the countries that have been successful, you know, the big countries, Russia, India, China, South Africa, they government subsidized and funded people to write software. The Americans spent millions and billions of dollars making sure they had their software people. Average company in the United States, where does the Americans get their money from? They spend huge amounts on the military. Billions of that goes to these software companies, and then that's how they write software. Governments in Africa have to do something so that the brains of Africa can have a jobs and things But the softwares are being written, isn't it? So yeah. and in the sectors, if you look at Ghana, for instance, yeah. um, in various sectors, softwares are being written. Yep. So where is the opportunity? But he, where are they being written and by whom? Where, where, so we right. should duplicate that? No, no. We should, instead, of the, instead of outsourcing it to India, make it done here. It's, I will tell you. Will there not be a copyright issue? No, you write it from the, the you, people write software from the beginning. A, a good example: Nigeria. There was a good entrepreneur had a good solution working. All of a sudden, they decided, oh no, no, it's not. It actually worked. New government comes in. They throw it out. Let's go get the foreigners. Four years later, nothing is working, and only his pilot is working. Software failure is all over the world. Don't believe that these guys have figured out software. They haven't. I'm here to tell you as a software expert, one of the leading software people in the world, most of these software projects fail. United UK, two billion pounds failure wasted software to try and change the healthcare. Who is responsible for that? Imagine if there was a two billion pound failure year. That might even topple your government. Mm. Right? But UK, nobody calls. Just call them again, give them some more money. Well, we stop toppling governments in Africa. We vote them out. So yeah, yeah. what you should say is that maybe that will get the government to lose election. Yeah, but I, mean, I don't yes, yeah, no, no, no. Yes, use no, no, no. I, I accept it. Good criticism. Yeah. Good criticism. No, no, I accept We don't that. like hearing that anymore. Yeah, no. I, yeah. Good we, criticism. We will vote them out at yeah. the next election. Yeah. No, okay. no, sorry. Corrected. I, I agree. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. But that's an interesting point you make. Okay, if somebody's watching us tonight and he says that this guy, Roy, from wherever, talking a lot, Yep. What has software got to do with the running water in my house? I don't have running water. He wants a minister to commit money to do software for some young people to be practicing software. When I don't have running water, shouldn't the minister be spending that money on running water? He should do both. I agree. There's no question that Can software help Absolutely. running water? That's the real question. You know how much money we get paid in the rest of the world to figure out? You know half of the water in most cities in the UK is what lost in the ground before it reaches the end point? Same with here. Same right. here. More what? than half, actually, here gets lost. How do you fix that? You think you just dig well, up the, the roads? the pipes are broken. Ah, but here's the thing is, to actually figure the problem out, today you need software. You put sensors all along the pipes, you know exactly in real time where the water is leaking, and then you can fix it before it actually becomes a problem. Same thing in the power plants. We get paid a lot uh, of money. You need software to do that, right? Yes, you need, everything needs software So that now. somebody sitting in his office and the computer can tell that they, the pipe in front of Metro TV is broken. Right, and that it's even more better than that. It might break because we've noticed that the, the pressure is oh, changing. I can even tell you that it might break. It might, especially with electricity, less so with water, but even with electricity, you know what, maybe in, in four hours that transformer is gonna break, let's go fix it now, before it breaks. And nobody has lost electricity before then. That's what software can do. That's amazing. Yes. What are you here for? Do you, you say you have a company that's 300 million, right. and it's based in Chicago. Yeah, although I would say we're pretty distributed. My idea was, a, I, because I'm an internationalist, I'm a pan-Africanist, I believe that we should have a global, not hierarchical by any country. So we're actually distributed. Our first office was in uh, Johannesburg, but my goal is to have an office somewhere here in West Africa, in East Africa, but to create a pan-African network of innovators so we can build more. The trouble with small country companies and countries, they, it's hard to compete sometimes with the big guys. And we need to be able to have a, 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 an alliances between software people in Uganda and Tanzania and Nigeria. So I want to help facilitate the creation of this network. So you, you want to create a Pan-African software development company? Uh, uh, and a movement, not just, not just my company. I'm actually interested, not just, I want all these guys who wrote to you to be successful too. My vision is... So you want to create a revolutionary... I want to revolutionize the software industry and completely wipe out the guys who own it and run it now. They have no interest in the people of Africa. I'm telling you that. They come here and they pretend that they're... Where are that, their... That's too strong. No, I, they, I, I, and I, you I, have no basis to say that. Yes, I do. Ask them how many programmers are in this country. You should ask, ask, I should ask Bill Gates how many... Yeah, ask him. How many soft company... How many, how, how many programmers has he put, moved from his office in Bellevue to this country? Why should he do that? Why should he do that? Yeah. Because that is what's going to build capacity long-term for this country. He's selling his product. Why yeah, not? exactly. But that's what I'm saying. So, the, is he trying to help or is he selling his product? 
He's trying to sell his product. That's good for him. You, you sell your product too. No, but see, I, luckily for me, I have an easier business model. My product is putting people in country to build software. So when I leave, the people have the skills and they're doing their own work. I don't have a product. That's easier for me because my business model is simpler. But just to come and hire people and then they produce. But I, I, my goal is not to come here and do an outsourcing contract and send it to another country. That's the difference because I am morally obligated wherever I go to make a difference in that country. That's my So you, you think that um, as part of the discourse about Africa, um, economic degradation, we've been talking about that. Yep. IMF and World Bank appear yep. to be interested in that a lot. Yep. Political stability, yep. introduction of democracy. Yep. You think that software development should come up on top of the page? I think it should. Even when you're talking about transparency of government, we know that e-government and software stuff like that can be used to help people report corruption and hold the government accountable. We need simple software. Actually, we're helping write some of that for other places to make the government more difficult for them to be corrupt. Right? That software. How will that work, for instance? You could have a software anybody on their cell phone can, can anonymously, you anonymize the data from a cell phone and they could SMS in something and there could be an independent body or group of people looking at that. There's all kinds of techniques to anonymize so to protect the person who is a whistleblower on some corruption. Right? Make something simple like that. Have numbers. Have, um, there are people in India doing this already, creating all kinds of whistleblowing systems with cell phones and phones. That could be a ma made available here. So that's a kind of easy use of technology to hold the government more accountable. We know that India was, was big on technology, and that was part of their renaissance from the third world now, yep. Yep. now into the BRICS. But what about Brazil? Brazil is interesting. Brazil is where I'm at. We also have a big office in Brazil. Brazil is actually per capita and dollar-wise doing even better than India. It's probably the three countries outside of the rich countries that are doing very well are Brazil, India, and China. The difference between China and Brazil versus India, India is exporting a lot, still is exporting. Software. Software and technology. Mm -hmm. But Brazil and China, when they are using their software, they're helping their own companies be get bigger and bigger. So look at Huawei, right? And Huawei is in Huawei, China. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're one of our clients, mm -hmm. right? They have they're in Ghana too. Yeah, they have 40,000 software engineers in China, right? But when Huawei has those software people, Huawei is building switches, right? That's why anybody who's doing anything today has to have programmers in their country. So Huawei has 40,000 people helping them build hardware. If you're going to build hardware, you need software. So the question is, where are those skilled people going to be? Are they going to be in another country? Or are they going to be in your country? That's the choice you have to make. It appears that we don't even have a law in, in Ghana for, created by parliament about the regulation of software. I'm not sure we do. I stand to be corrected if anybody knows, but I really doubt if we do. Is that a terrible thing? That's a terrible thing, right? There's a new movement. You're talking about right, I'm getting into some of the things that could be done, but mm -hmm. one of them is called coded in country. Coded in country means a certain percentage of anything that's sold has to be written in the country that it's being uh, sold in. Right? Imagine if that well, that's, law... That's a regulation in America? A, no, no it's, a, it's a movement to create those kind of regulations. There. Okay, that all right. the software that is used in this country must be created in that country. Right. The thing is, you know, the Americans pretend it's a free market and they don't have those. But you imagine that a, a, a U.S. military contractor is going to use software made in China? I don't think so. Assuming you are the African Union tonight and yep. the African leaders have said to you that, Roy, we have heard your story. We would like you to give us the steps of how to go about this and we're happy to pay for it. What's step one and step two? I think we need to have a deep set of policies and things that are passed by many of the governments around things like the protection of the privacy of information of the people of Africa. That's a privacy of the information, that's number one, a policy that all governments have to follow. Number two, I think that the technical infrastructure, the, again, these, these things that are above the, the wires that people use for running internet fiber cables, those should be made public and owned only by African companies or African governments so that anybody has access to internet services provided here in Africa by Africans. This will create jobs. This will create an ecosystem for entrepreneurs to come about, and it will change how w people think about technology in Africa. Those are two of the major policy things. Then I think a third thing is, I agree on the, the person mentioned about training. It can't just be university training. We need a way that other people out of the system can get trained. So we need a, a continent-wide plan to build capacity while we're building these things. Protect the privacy, build an infrastructure, train people. Those are the three things that sh the governments and the AU should be doing. Roy is right. Uh, lots of our leaders don't have the foresight and the idea. A lot of government workers sit in the ministries and actually do nothing, he says, etc., etc. I agree with your guest. Uh, software development and technological advancement should be the topmost priority of most developing countries. Um, please ask the honorable man, etc., uh, etc. Okay, a lot of 
messages coming in. I will have to roll it up here on the occasion of the death of Christ, which will be celebrated tomorrow. I'm sure you know about that. The resurrection on uh, Sunday. Yes. He died for our sins. Thanks for coming, Roy. It's been Thank a pleasure you. talking to you. No, it's been my pleasure. best interview this year. Actually, my second best. Oh. All right. I <laughs> take that. My best was with Miles Morrow. Do you hear about him? Yeah, not so much. Yeah. Okay. Good night. Happy Easter.